So if I have an accountancy business and I want a consistent flow of inquiries, what would you do? Um, where would you spend your marketing budget and what do you recommend? So if I'm looking to grow an accountant's business, then first and foremost, what I'd be wanting to do is try to start getting leads as soon as possible. So to get leads as soon as possible, I would be wanting to team up with a lead generation company. So there's many different lead generation companies out there that provide leads, probably Bark being one of the biggest ones. My only issue with certain lead generation companies is that they'll resell that lead four or five times, so you're not getting exclusive leads. If you are a, a, an accountancy company looking to grow, I'd strongly recommend you going to fatrank.com. They provide accountants leads and you only pay on converted jobs. So that means you don't pay anything for the SEO or the PPC or anything for the leads. You only pay when you convert a job. We do have a qualification process. So fill in um, on fatrank.com your details and let's go through exactly what type of leads you're looking for. Moving on from that, from getting a consistent flow of inquiries instantly from a lead generation company like Fatrank. You definitely can't throw all your eggs in one basket. You need that diversification. And I think the biggest part is trying to generate your own leads. The holy grail of an accountancy company is having an inbound set of leads that you're generating yourself. But the probably the, the, the best play that's going to get you the highest multiplier if you're ever looking to sell your book or sell your accountancy company is trying to do SEO. Yeah. So trying to get your website ranking to the top of Google for keywords that you want and you think you can convert, but also having educational posts for some of your existing customers. If ever they've got a question, you can do a blog post and a video and send that out. That engagement through the website is good. You might also be able to leverage to get more out of existing clients like, oh, have you ever thought about having this protection um, like tax uh, tax savings and R&D tax, um, stuff like that. So these all R&D tax relief is, is a great play in the UK. But there's all these different ways that you can try to get more out of existing clients as well as trying to get new customers on board as well. What's your thoughts on... So for me, the major two plays is a lead generation company and, and doing SEO. Yes. What's your thoughts on PPC? Because PPC can generate leads fast. It's expensive, but it can generate leads fast. Mm -hmm. So I, I actually have a little bit of experience in this industry. Um, I, I, I've tried running PPC and it is very expensive. Um, and if you don't have a well-optimized um, converting website, it can be even more expensive. And if you don't have a back end to, like, let's say, for example, if the lifetime value of your client is only, let's say, £500 or £1,000 or something, it can be very, very expensive on the PPC side. <laughs> so I, I, I think you, you need a really good product. So, um, for example, if, if your lifetime value of, let's say, a real estate um, person coming in is right. Okay, I, I, I know that they need to set up a, a limited company. Um, I know that I'll have them for at least the next five years on average. Um, so that that might be like like let's say two thousand um, pound over the next five years that you can get out of that client. And um, that that could work if you're going after really long tail. But if you're just going to target let's say accountants in your me or accountants Manchester or accountants London. That can be uh, very expensive. And then you've obviously got the likes of click fraud. So you've got your competitors clicking on your ads. You've got shop window um, people that are just clicking around and um, trying to get the cheapest quote and they might not ever end up turning into a client. So PPC, I, I've kind of got a love-hate relationship with. I, I, it can work, but it's very, very risky. Yeah. Um, SEO on the other side, that's where I would focus on. Um, so generating my own inquiries. Um, I think you mentioned at the start of this video, like when you are looking, let's say for example, if you ever did decide to sell your accountancy um, business, I know that a lot of accountants in the UK do build up their books and then they sell it to another accountancy uh, practice. But if you do ever decide to sell your accountancy uh, um, practice, if you are generating your own leads via your own website, um, 
that can actually add a higher multiple to your overall business valuation. So that's a, obviously another thing that you can go down um, and that works out very well. It can be um, expensive because accountancy, it's, it's, it's in the finance sector. Um, so it can be very competitive in certain parts of the country, but it's well worth doing. Yeah, I mean, there's other places where some people talk about to grow an accountancy firm, you should be doing traditional marketing. So billboard ads, TV ads, radio ads, maybe putting yourself in magazines and stuff like that. Now, if you are an accountancy practice and you are a business owner, well, you, the, the one thing that you're looking at all the time is profit and loss. Well, I'd strongly recommend when you're looking at your marketing, you're looking at the return on investment that you're getting. For me, traditional marketing is so difficult to track the return on investment. And for that reason, I'm not a massive advocate of doing it. With regards to PPC, at least you can track whether you're making money or not making money on it. You know exactly how much that client's costing you to get that conversion. SEO, in my opinion, is a, a longer play. It's not going to get your leads instantly, but it's a much better play long term and it builds trust and you can get the testimonials and the case studies of jobs of what you've done. But then the next part is social media. I'd want to be, I'd want to make certain you're doing some sort of social proof. I want to make certain that you've got that trust and you, you're networking um, online with regards to Facebook, Twitter. Probably the biggest one I would say is LinkedIn. So if I'm dealing with um, CFOs of businesses and stuff like that, I want to be networking with as many of those as I can or managing directors. Or if I know that doing accountancy for OnlyFans, doing accountancy for dental practices, doing accountancy for law firms, or doing accountancy for one specific type of industry makes me more money, like doctors and nurses, right? If I know that makes me more money, guess what I'm going doing on LinkedIn? I'm going to hitting up every single person in that sector and giving them 30% off in the first year fees. Yeah. So it's almost break even year one, but knowing that if I provide a good service, long term, the lifetime value, they're going to stay with me on average for 10 to 15 years. If it's a thousand pound a month in profit a year, thousand pound a year profit, 15 years, that's 15,000 pound lifetime value for the creme de la creme. I'm like, right, okay. And then you've got all the cross sales that you can start doing payroll, bookkeeping, there's that. You've got all these different other services of what you can do. That might end up being the lifetime value of that customer's worth 30,000. Yeah. So to you acquire, to acquire that customer then for two or 3,000 pounds, yes, in year one and year two, it might be a, a net loss. But knowing that the lifetime value of that customer, then you've then also got, which people don't really think about, is the word of mouth. If you go and do a good job for that doctor's um, or dental practice, they're going to tell other dental practices when they're in the meetups, or they might let you know that they've got a dental practice um, mastermind coming up or conference coming up. I'd want to be at that conference. If I know that dental practice is my focus places that I want to do accounts for, I'm going to want to stand. And the stand sponsorship stand might only cost £2,000 for the day. Knowing that they're worth 30000 lifetime value, mm -hmm. I'm now thinking to myself, I only need one client out of this, and it's been well worth it. Mm -hmm. So networking and sponsorship practices can can also be a good play for accountancy firms. I, so w one key word or one sub-industry within accountancy that's really good is manufacturing. Because, for example... Manufacturing, um, they're going to have a lot of staff, first of all, um, but then they also, in a lot of cases, fall under the R&D tax. So, for example, some, some accountancy firms, they charge, let's say, 25%. So if, it, if the R&D claim came to 100K, that accountancy firm, let's, let's say, gets around to 20, 25K of that. So that, that could be another play. Dentistry is a really good one. Um, startup. Um, account accountants for startups because first of all you need to register the company for them and um, sometimes they want they might want a business plan so if, if you have somebody in, in your accountancy firm I know that some chartered accountants do some chartered accountants don't but there's a lot of cross sales that you can actually do to a lot of those um, startups as well so try to think of a sub niche within accountancy to go after yeah. and, and try and double down on it see, see for us when we're doing um, lead generation for accountants. 
I try and stay away from the startup businesses. I try, and what I'm trying to do is find the established businesses that are doing a million plus in revenue, because yeah. then I know they've got payroll, I know they've got VAT, yeah. and then straight away you kind of, all right, a million to maybe 10 million kind of bracket of, of revenue. They're the ones that I'm trying to generate them leads for, because then I know I'm going to get a bigger kickback. Where if I'm doing a startup and they might only be doing year-end accounts, it might not be as good. So if someone is looking for leads from fatrank.com, as part of the qualification process, we are going to ask those awkward questions where, where do you make the most money? And the only reason why we're asking you that question is because we want to generate you those leads. If it's doctors or manufacturing, manufacturing is a great one, like you said. They're employing a lot of people. They've got to do that. They've got to do payroll. If that's where you want to target, that's what we can target for you. You should also be targeting it as well to try and generate as many leads you can specifically for that. So if you are a business owner for an, of an accountancy firm, check out fatrank.com or make certain the other one is when you were talking about um, certain niches, Get them filters on LinkedIn and get those connections. Get connecting with manufacturing business owners, manufacturing managing directors, manufacturing CEOs and CFOs, and try to get that networking built up for you to be able to grow your accountancy firm.